Hey, I'm Kevin, and today I'm going to show you how I made these saddle bar stools in the Kev Bout Workshop. I decided to build this project so I can sit up closer to my workbench. This is also the perfect project to use some of the lumber that has been sitting around my shop for a while. I decided to use this large piece of cherry wood that I got from a fallen tree back in college, so I started to mill it by hand. This was taking too long, so I sped up the process by cutting as deep as I could with a circular saw and finishing the rest by hand. This took a lot of elbow grease and it made me realize that I need to get a bigger bandsaw. Next I flattened one side of the blanks by using my router and router sled, but a joiner would make quick work of this. I came back the next day ready to turn these blanks into stool seats. To square up the piece I started at the planer and brought the pieces to the thickness I was looking for which was something about 10 quarter. From there I made the sides 90 degrees with a straight edge and my circular saw. To remove the rest I used a flush trim bit in the router. When it comes to making the length of the stool, I'm trying to make the major defects here and here as close to the center as possible so that I can either remove them completely or have the least amount of defect as possible. Now it's time to cut the curve in the seat. To do that, I'm going to use this jig, but first I'll show you how it's made. I measured the two rails out to three feet. I flushed the blank up to the bottom of the board and marked where the top ends. This will show where the curve will bottom out. To create the curve, I used three screws on each side and bent the flexible ruler to the middle one. Then I cut as close to the line as I could without touching it and cleaned it up to the line with a sander. Then I just traced it to the other rail and repeated the process. I screwed it together with some spare pieces of 2x4. These lengths don't matter just as long as they're the same length. I made some blocks to fit in snugly so that my piece does not move around. It is important to keep the blank centered and not moving throughout the process. And so now this is not going anywhere. As you can see, the router will ride along the rails, cutting the curve. To make the base for the router, I just took a scrap piece of MDF and attached two rails to it, and then attached the whole thing to the router base. Now it's time for the process of hogging away the material. I had to switch to a longer bit as my wider one did not reach when I got close to the finished curve. Since it is thinner, this took even more time. I cleaned up any marks left by the router using my sander. To fill any imperfections, I used some epoxy and sawdust. I also wanted to try dyeing my epoxy black. 
So I filled the punky spot of the wood with black epoxy. Then I cleaned it up flush with a card scraper. I gave the bottom of the seats a rounded edge as it would make it more comfortable to pick up by hand. Now that the seats are done, it's time to start working on the legs. Your local lumber yard may have some eight quarter blanks already cut for you, but I decided to just cut them myself. I was able to find a really nice cherry board at a reasonable price. I used maple for the crossbars, which I already had on hand. I first cut the chair to a more manageable size to work with. A friend was able to let me use his table saw as I didn't have one at the time. I cut the legs down square and at the same time I cut the maple to size as well. I used the planer to clean up the saw marks and bring them to their final thickness. To angle the legs in and towards the center I made a compound miter cut turning my blade 7 degrees and tilting the blade 7 degrees. I suggest making your stools to fit you. I personally needed mine at a certain height so that I can sit up to my workbench, but this may be different for you depending on where you use them. I decided to go with 28 inch legs which would bring my stools to about 30 inches tall when the seats were attached. When making your final cuts on the legs it is very important that the top and bottom are parallel so that it sits flat to the floor and the seat sits flat to the legs. So take your time and orient the legs properly when making the second cut. To make repeat cuts, I just set up a stop block with one of the cutoff pieces. To figure out where I wanted the crossbars, I made a mock-up out of scrap pine so I know they are in a comfortable spot for my feet. This also showed me how long to cut the crossbars. I figured out where to place them and I started to mark for the mortise and tenons. I took the maple pieces over to the bandsaw to start cutting the tenons. And I finished them up with a handsaw. Now it's time to start cutting the mortises. To hog out most of the material, I used a drill press and a Forstner bit. I angled my table to the same seven degrees to compensate for the legging. To finish up the rest of the mortise, I knocked out the rest with a chisel and mallet. Since these are through mortise and tenons, I made a tapered mortise so that when I put the tenon through and add the wedges, it locks the rail in place. To connect the tops, I decided to take an easier route and just use dowels and pocket holes since they won't be seen. I cut the top rails to size and found the center and drilled for the dowels. For the pocket holes, I used a 7 degree wedge to drill the holes in straight. I will be attaching the tops with tabletop fasteners. And to cut the slots, I used a biscuit cutting bit in my router. The last thing to do for the tenons is to cut the slots for the wedges. I also drilled some holes to release some of the stress. To make the wedges, I used some of the scrap cherry and sanded them until they fit. I sanded the pieces before I assembled them because it would be harder once they are put together. 
make sure you give it a dry fitting to see how everything lines up. I use some of the cutoffs as calls to clamp the legs and apply pressure where it is needed. Now it's time for the glue up. Make sure all the joints are covered with glue and apply pressure appropriately. Then it's time to insert the wedges. Be careful not to break the wedges because you'll have a rough time trying to fix your mistake. I then proceeded to attach the two halves together using pocket holes. I cut the excess flush with a handsaw. When I put the legs together, I think one of these got thrown a little out of whack, so there was a wobble. To fix this, I rose the blade on my table saw slightly and took some passes over to shave off some of the legs. To clean up the bottom of these, I tacked on some sandpaper to my workbench. I gave it one last sanding before I applied finish. While I was working on the legs, I noticed a crack developing on the underside of the seat tops, so I made some bow tie inlays to prevent any more cracking. For finish, I started with a half cut of shellac to try to prevent some of the blotchiness that comes with cherry. I then followed up with some cherry danish oil. I decided to use some paste wax on the top and buffing it out to get a super smooth finish. The last thing to do is to attach the tops. I think these turned out great. They are super comfortable and they look beautiful. It is amazing what you can do with a fallen tree. If you like this project, hit that like button and let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button and you can see them when they come out. You could also follow me on Instagram at KevBotWorkshop to see more photos and projects in the works. That's it everybody, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time in the KevBot Workshop.